surrounded by the presence of God on tonight is there anybody grateful that no matter what it looks like you're surrounded by you can lift up your hands and just tell them Lord thank you that I'm I'm surrounded by your presence well family we know this song and if you don't mind we can become one big choir and just lift up our worship to him together This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. When I lift up my hands and worship, this is how I fight my battle. You lift your voice and sing it. It may look like ah, ah, it may look. that's it. All over the room. 
music for his praise. Every worship but is thirsty for his praise. Lift up your voice. Lift up your worship. And because God is the greatest power. Never be defeated, oh, and be God's God. It's the greatest power. We shall never, never be defeated, and be God's God. It's the greatest power. Know a church we shall never, never be defeated. We can lift up our voice and play that. And because God is the greatest power, we shall never, shall never, never be. Oh, come on, lift your voice.
shouted You know my oh. Come on, lift up your hands and shout it Voices, please break the music, please. Come on, lift up your hands as high as you can, and you say it. You know my name. That's it. Shout it out loud, church. Music right here. Come on, you shout it out. Why? Oh, and oh, how you walk with me. Anybody know the Lord talk with you? Oh, how you talk with me. That's it, church. Shout it out loud. And oh, I dare you just to lift up one hand and go for broke and just lift up one shout unto the king and get his attention real quick can we just take 10 seconds to get God's attention somebody needs some change to be broken tonight somebody need a healing tonight somebody need a breakthrough tonight so can we just lift up one shout unto the king as a baby will get an attention from his parents can we lift up one shout unto the king? Because you're worthy to be praised, Jesus. You're worthy to be praised, Jesus. We forever bless your name. We forever exalt you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Come on, don't wait on me. You lift up a shout unto the king. Lift up a shout unto the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Lift up a shout unto the one who, who, who is the Lord of history. He always was, he always is, he always will be a mountain mover, a chain breaker. Lift up a shout unto the King. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We won't rain on tonight. I said we won't rain on tonight. We want the fire of the Holy Ghost to fall afresh on tonight. Is there anybody here that came for a fire on tonight? If you will, just lift up your hands one more time and say, Lord, release the rain in my house, on my job, in my family. Release the rain. Now, come on, open up your mouth. Burn like a fire on this altar again and release the river, send the rush of the wind, and our hearts are ready, and we will wait. So open. And release the rain Release the rain oh. And we need a downpour Of your presence again Let it flow like a fountain Let the well bring up again and our hearts long for your power, oh yeah. And let us see your signs and wonders, so really serene. Pour it out, pour it out.
it sounds like when you've been fasting, you've been praying for 21 days. I want to know what it sounds like when you ain't leaving it without what you came for. Open up your mouth and believe God that it's already done. I want you to go and just put your arms around three or four people and just tell them it's happening tonight. It's happening tonight. It's happening tonight. It's happening tonight. Come on, tell them it's happening tonight. Those of you watching around the world, thank you so much for tuning in. Whatever the part of the world you're watching, in the United States and all around the world, you're tuned in at the right time, at the right place. And we're grateful to God today. Put those hands together. You may be seated. Let's receive this awesome choir.
Wow. Man, somebody knows he can do it, right? Oh, my God. If you know he can do it, just give the Lord a wave off it. I know he can do it. Tonight, we've asked you to come. We've asked you to, to bring your oil for us to consecrate tonight. We believe in this place. When we, at the beginning of the year, bless the oil over your family. We bless the oil that will come in contact. That's a point of contact for sickness, for breakthrough. Oil put on your doorpost to your children, on your car. Spouse acting crazy, just wait till they go to sleep and just put a little bit on the forehead. But there's power in the anointing of God and the faith to believe. When we consecrate oil to the Lord, something happens. Coming into agreement over all your children and taking that oil and putting it over all your children. When you're getting ready to go into a crazy meeting, just take some of that oil and say, Lord, put it on my mind, on my mouth. <laughs> when you get ready to make a transaction that you don't want to come out empty hand, I put it on my hand, Lord. I'm not coming out this door empty handed. I want a greasy church. I said, I want a greasy church. I want you so anointed, so slippery in the spirit. Tonight, as you have brought your oil tonight, I want you to take that oil. I want you to stand with us for the blessing of the oil. I want you today on the screen, if you're watching around the world, as we share together in this blessing together, Most holy God, our heal and redeemer and refuge, we give you thanks for the gift of this oil. As the apostles anointed many who were sick and you healed them, so may your Holy Spirit come on us and on this oil that those who receive this anointing in repentance and faith may be made well in accordance with your will through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Together as a congregation, let us read. Oh Lord, state your name. We recognize this oil to be a symbol of our faith in you and your ability to purify, make whole, consecrate unto yourself. Father, may it please you in regard favorably and to bless this oil, to cleanse it of any defilement and upon it, and to make it holy for the work of your glory. Holy Spirit, we call upon you to be present and active in our homes, on our jobs, in our schools, wherever we may find ourselves, so that the healing, delivering, and liberating gifts will be received and manifested. We declare that whoever and whatever this oil comes into contact with be hereby placed under the divine protection of an all-seeing, all-knowing, and all-powerful God. With this oil, yokes of bondage will be broken generational curses will be reversed sickness of all men of disease will be driven out and barred from returning demons will be cast out the presence of evil in our minds and hearts dispel and the opposition of progress fighting against me my family this city this state this country this world dismantled we understand without faith this oil is rendered ineffective therefore it is by faith that we place a demand on the anointing to release healing virtue on the sick. Hope for the despair. Generational blessings on my family and future generations. A mind for financial freedom. Vision for communal prosperity. Provisions for vision fulfillment. And a resurrection of buried dreams. In a sleep consciousness. When where there is lifeless living. And may we walk in integrity and boldness grace and boldness and embark on this lifelong journey of discipleship and may we act according with the fruit of your spirit 
so that the love of God is overwhelmingly experienced and embodied. And to the beckoning call to a greater commitment to you, we courageously respond. I'm all in. In Jesus' name, amen. I need you to give God a praise right now like it's already done. Come on, give him glory. Now, while you are standing, I've asked you to bring your prayer requests. And I want you to take those in your hand now. And with lifted hands all over this place. With lifted hands with those prayer requests that you have written. And I don't care if you brought a notebook. You brought the bills that you need taken care of tonight. Make copies of student loans. Whatever you brought here, test results from the doctor. While you're watching around the world, this act of faith, I want you to lift them now. Because the act of lifting is an act of surrender. What we're saying is, Lord, you take it by faith. Yes, Elder Telefero is going to come. I'm going to ask him to come and lead us in this prayer over every one of these needs at this altar. Every one of these needs that we raise before the Lord right now. Come on, let's lift those needs now. Father, we honor you and we praise you today. God, we thank you for the privilege to come before you, God, with our prayer request. We come before you today, God, because you're an all-powerful God. You're all-sufficient and you're all-knowing. Father, you are God that before the very foundations of the earth, you knew that we would be in this place today. You knew that we would bring every single prayer request before you today. And Father, we bring them to you because we're tired of carrying them on our own. Father, we're, try, we're tired of trying to figure it out on, on our own. Father, we've tried to work it out. We've gone to this one and to that one. But God, we resolve that it's better in your hands. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift them up to you asking for a divine exchange. Take them away from us, God. And we pray in the name of Jesus that as we are in this sanctuary today, you're moving on our behalf. So God, every person in this house that's needing healing in their body, we pray for healing right now in the name of Jesus. Touch them from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Whatever it is, God, that's on the inside of them that's not like you, we declare and decree a mighty rushing wind to move all across this sanctuary from heart to heart and from breast to breast. We declare and we decree, God, that your Spirit of God is moving in this house today to heal, to deliver, and to set free. Every person in this house that needs a financial blessing, whatever it is, we declare a debt cancellation anointing in this house right now. Every ounce of debt, God, every ounce of student loan, every mortgage, every car loan, every loan, every personal loan, every business loan, every predatory lending loan, it's canceled in the name of Jesus. God, give us the wherewithal to pay it all back suddenly. We ask in the name of Jesus that you would touch computers right now. Allow them to mysteriously show a zero balance on the account. We pray in the name of Jesus that as we're raising them up to you, God, we're releasing it into your care. Now, God, we don't want to be ignorant and well-doing, but God, we ask for strategy to get it done. We ask for the willingness to get it done. We ask for the faith to get it done. And we ask God for the desire to get it done. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for every family that's represented in this house. Every need on that sheet of paper that has to do with family. We thank you, God, for reconciliation. We thank you, God, for peace. We thank you, God, for love. And we thank you, God, for long-suffering. We pray in the name of Jesus that your hand of protection is around every family. God, bring husbands and wives back together. Bring sons and daughters back to parents. And God, we pray in the name of Jesus that every generational curse is broken off of the family right now in the name of Jesus. Every generational curse, curse of lack, every generational curse, of sickness, every generational curse of brokenness, every generational curse of mediocrity, it is broken in the name of Jesus. And we declare right now, God, that you're giving a fresh anointing right now. I pray in the name of Jesus that we will move into a greater level of understanding of who you are. So God, every prayer request that deals with coming into the knowledge of who you are, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would help us to understand you in a greater way. God, we don't just want you for the stuff. We don't just want the presence, but we want your presence. So God, help us to get to know you in a better way. God, we have fasted for 21 days and we didn't fast for nothing. But God, we have come in this place believing by faith that you're going to do some things that we don't have a capacity to do. So God, as we lift these up to you, we're not going to get tired.
tired of lifting them up because God we lift them up to you believing God that you can handle it now Father in the name of Jesus every single prayer request that's on this sheet that I as the preacher did not call out God you know it and we pray God that you would meet every single need God according to your word and according to your way your word tells us that you will supply all our needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. So God, thank you for supplying all of our needs. And God, we're not going to wait until you do it to praise you. We're going to give you an on time praise. We're going to give you a by faith praise. We're going to praise you and anticipate the move of God that's happening. And God, it's not just going to happen tomorrow, but it's going to happen today. And God, we're praising you for the miracle. We're praising you for the breakthrough. We're praising you for the deliverance. We're praising you for the restoration. Satan, take your hand off the people of God. Loose your hold. And we thank you, God, for the victory. We say yes to your will and yes to your way. And thank you, Jesus, that it's already done. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. And we thank God. Amen. Somebody shout, it's done. Come on, shout, it's done. You're the God of the signs You're the one that's one You're the God of the God of miracles signs You're the one that's one You're the God of the God of miracles signs You're the one that's one You're the God of the God of miracles signs You're the one that's one You're the God hands together give God glory and praise come on you may have your seat we are grateful to God tonight and God can't you just feel the spirit of anticipation in this house tonight the last 21 days we've been fasting and believing God for specific things and I want to thank God for just a mature church who got it you got it you really got it you you really did it you, you, you did it. You did. Some of you for the first time in your life went through 21 days trusting God. God has been good to Mount Zion Church. 2020 is such a profound year and I want to give you some, some update on what we're planning and praying about. I want to thank God again for our efforts in 1866. We are grateful to God as we set out for $3.5 million in seven months. 1.6 of that million was raised in seven months, and we give God the glory for that. And I know that 1.9 out there, I just know he's a miracle worker. And once that's done, and I'm, I'm believing God. I'm just believing God. It's going to happen. We are excited about a few things. One is building out our youth areas in both locations. This is critical for us because we want to be squarely focused on our children. Our church is growing rapidly and it's growing diverse. Families are coming. We want to provide a space for our children much more expanded and innovative space, technology integrated with fun for our kids to have a very safe and fun place to go and you to drop your kids off and know that they're safe and we thank God for the incredible extraordinary team that works right now with our children every single weekend. Let's thank God for them. We want to give them more space and so we plan to do this as a simultaneous venture. Many of you have been asking about the Dream Center project. It has not gone unnoticed. The Dream Center, Mount Zion owns 
significant amount of land the Jefferson Street corridor. Let me give you this and I'll put it in real basic terms for you. It is a blessing that we did not initially go forward with uh, building the Dream Center many years ago because we would have not made good use of the land that was sitting at the epicenter of North Nashville. What we have discovered, and it is true, is that Mount Zion's property sits on what's called an opportunity zone. Opportunity zones have been set aside by Congress so that developers, businesses, can invest in underserved communities and get 10 years of tax credit, no capital gains tax. So if a Starbucks or a Subway or a business like yours goes into an opportunity zone and invest in that community for 10 years, you don't have to pay capital gains tax, which makes it very attractive to invest in underserved communities. That piece of land is so coveted. When I tell you every demon in hell tried to get it, please understand me. The devil in hell wanted that land so bad. But I refuse to sell the destiny and the legacy of Mount Zion just to pay off debt. It would have been so convenient to just sell that land to some investor, take the money, pay off the locations, and say, hey, la da la da da but then we would have been perpetuating what so many people have done, right? You sell out your own community, and then you look back, and your children have nothing to inherit. Mount Zion is, owns over $50 million worth of real estate in this city around, and the Jefferson Street location and the property is going to come into something and evolve into something much bigger than we ever imagined. Our board of directors and I, we've been sharing, and 2020 is gonna be a year of strategic change. Fittingly, the Dream Center is evolving to meet more than the community's needs, um, but it's gonna meet, I think, this world's needs. Notably, in addition to the fitness center that we know we're going to build, a gymnasium that's going to allow us to have midnight basketball leagues for our youth, New Level CDC, our community development corporation that has built houses in West Nashville, and our, our CDC has awards off the chain. You'll be hearing about that. They've done some incredible work already. We're going to house the CDC, which is currently in our basement of Jefferson Street. We're going to move that to the Dream Center. But we are also, the Dream Center will house 7,000 square feet of retail space. Not only that, but imagine up now, 116 unit mixed income apartments. Some, some of these apartments will be used for teachers, nurses, and other vital people chosen to serve others over high paying careers, police officers and firemen, because everybody can't pay that outrageous rent to live close to downtown. And so Mount Zion is going to help solve that problem, but also help alleviate a housing crisis in Nashville. We will also have 40,000 square feet of office building which could house a bank, small business incubation center, Starbucks, FedEx Kinko's, who knows? With this expanded vision, we need to structure debt financing that will be covered by revenue from the other tenants and other incentives from the city, state, and federal programs. Translation. A significant portion of this funding will come from HUD. That's a program earmarked for these kinds of projects. It's happening all around the country. And there's significant funding that will come from the city and from the state to fund these projects. Mount Zion then will make a significant upfront investment to get the project started. 
And then we will benefit from the land lease because we own the land. So we will then establish a nonprofit entity that will operate independently of Mount Zion that will run that venture. And consequently, that venture will pay Mount Zion in perpetuity over half a million dollars a year forever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I hope, I hope y'all see what I'm talking about. I hope y'all see what I'm talking about. I am, um, and I've always been unapologetically a visionary. And what I have been trying to say to you is 1866 wasn't some head trip for me. Getting you out of debt was no head trip for me. It was about what I saw coming. Economists say that the next recession will not be because of housing as 2008, 2007, 8. The next recession will come because of household debt. Because people have so much debt that they cannot manage. So I as a leader went to bed crying a lot for you. Because as a pastor, I don't want you to have debt. I don't want you to be going out buying stuff to impress people. I want you to learn how to save your money so that when recession hits, it ain't got nothing to do with you. I want you to be under a ministry that's debt free and to have a mentality. So when we do this kind of stuff, when I tell you, I'm not even going there. So a few people here that I know this, later on, when we get closer, because when we get debt free and we start doing this Dream Center, when we announce this Dream Center, there are a few people here, Latricia and others who understand the landscape of this city. When we announce what we're going to do on Jefferson Street, and we announce the amount of invested dollars that has gone into that community, it will be unprecedented. When I tell you it will be unprecedented, and we are doing it without partner, we are doing it because we are trusting God because we want to maintain full control on what goes in that place. It's kingdom. It's, it's kingdom. Tonight, that's why I've been saying, I want you to learn out of every dollar to give God a dime. God give you $100, give him 10 give you a hundred thousand you give him ten thousand when he gives you a million not if when he gives you a million you write him a hundred thousand <laughs> you, you, you're gonna understand a lot tonight i promise you you don't know who you are yet that's it you don't because i said lord what's the problem you said they don't know who they are yet you're gonna know tonight trust me when i tell you that Tonight, 21 days you've been fasting. 21 days. I want you tonight, everybody who can, I want you to get a seed in your hand. We're going to give tonight. And I want everybody who can tonight, I'm going to ask, you, I'm going to ask low. So everybody who can tonight, $21 seed. $1 for every day you went before God. That's all. $21. You can give by text. You can give by check. You can give by neighbor, which means if you ain't got it, look down your row. Somebody on your row got it. Every single person on your row, I need you when you get that $21, whether you're texting it, ask the person next to you, do you have it? Because I want everybody on the row to make sure every individual on your row has it. We're going to bless other people tonight to be a blessing. Put a seed in their hand to be a blessing tonight. I, want every, I don't want nobody saying I couldn't do it. I want you to know you're sitting in a blessed place tonight. Every choir member, I want you to get that phone, text, that information. I don't want y'all writing faith checks. I don't want you doing fake text giving. 
I'm asking low for a reason. You'll understand a little later. But I want you to get it. Everybody on your row. Make sure everybody on your row. Because we're going to stand up. We're going to make this declaration together. And I want everybody standing up. Everybody. Even those holding the basket. You got the $21 seed. Don't hold the basket if you ain't got $21. <laughs> those of you watching online, seriously, those of you watching online, listen. Get that seed in your hand. Get it. Sow it right now online. Text that information. You know how to give online right now. I want every single person to be a part of what this is right now. Some of you, you couldn't wait to get your chicken, your, your steak in today. <laughs> Amen. I want you to stand. Now let's stand today. Declare this word with me. Everybody's standing. Lord, I thank you. What's in my hand started in your heart. I receive tonight a new mentality about giving. And I thank you that you are stretching my faith tonight to a whole nother level. And I give you glory that it's already done. In Jesus' name, abundance, financial breakthrough, debt-free living are mine. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Just pass those down. They'll come through right now. Thank you so much. Amen. Our choir is going to come. Bless us. I'll come right back in just a moment.
gon' declare it. And uh, there are moments in every ministry. There are moments in every ministry where a leader knows that the people are on the precipice of a shift that will happen that will change them forever. It's like that point when the plane is right at the clouds and you know eventually it's gonna just break through. And as your leader, I felt like we've been right at that ceiling of that cloud and I've just been saying, Lord, I just need somebody to push us, push us through. And as a leader, I was very prayerful and strategic about the first visiting voice in this house in this new decade in this new dimension after a 21 day fast who would God speak to me to come and shift us to that place this man of God is my friend Pastor Mark Baker the Greater Works Ministry of Brunswick, Georgia is one of the most prolific and profound orators of the gospel 
flat-footed anointed teacher a man of God who is a faith shaker if you that person that says Lord I believe but help my unbelief you're gonna leave her tonight without a doubt changed he is a husband father he is he is an extraordinary man of God who is the author of a new book called faith doing it God's way I want everybody to get it because after you hear him tonight you'll understand why I want you to give him it's his first time at Mount Zion and I want you to give him the biggest Mount Zion welcome on the planet right now let's thank God my friend Pastor Mark <laughs> wow 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 put your hands together for your bishop he... come on come on come on come on come on I'm serious come on come on I'm serious hallelujah come on my God my God there's so much I can say right now I'm trying to you know I'm on a little country boy so I'm up here in Nashville with the presiding bishop and so I want to act like I know a little something y'all but I'm just so blessed to be with him and his lovely wife first lady my sister come on they're so special to me they really are they're so special to me I'm happy to be at Mount Zion I tell you the God him true I watch y'all so much. I listen to Bishop. He is such, he is a real visionary. Yeah. I don't have to tell you you're blessed. You know you're blessed, right? So if you know you're blessed to have your bishop, scream like you just lost your mind. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. You're blessed to have him. You're blessed to have him. Oh, my God. Listen, he was saying so much. And I knew I was in the right place. And you are definitely in the right place. Man with vision like Bishop Walker, it is known all over this country, all over the world. If you ever mention his name, that's the first thing men, women of God tell you, a man of vision. A man that knows where he's going, knows that he has an assignment, and knowing that he is going to complete everything God put in his hand to do. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hold a person's hands next to you. We're going to go right into this word of faith on tonight. I thank him for giving me this opportunity. I really do. He could have called anybody in. I thank him for allowing me to come and speak uh, on this last of the 21 day of, of a corporate consecration, I know. But all of us have individual consecration. Uh, my church, we're still on our consecration right now as a corporate body. And it's always good when we can come together like this. Yeah, because we're thinking the same thing. And we're believing God for some things that only he can do. How many of y'all in great faith for something only God can do? I said, how many of you in great faith for something only God can do? Amen. Father, we thank you for the hands that we are holding on tonight. We thank you, Lord, that the hand that we hold, God, we thank you that they will never be sick again. We thank you, God, they'll never be broke again. Thank you, God, that they will never know what it is to experience lack again. Father, we just thank you for the hand that we are holding right now. Anoint these hands. Let these hands see miracles and signs, of even from the oil that they brought on tonight. Wherever they apply that oil, God, your presence will be among it. And as I move my flesh out the way tonight, let no flesh glory in your sight, but let glory and honor go to you, for you alone are worthy to be praised. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Put those hands together. Hold your neighbor and tell him, say, God is an amazing God. Amen. You may be seated. I tell you what, y'all, y'all just, Jesus don't make no sense how y'all say it. Y'all make a preacher don't want to preach and get up in the choir and act like he can say it. God, y'all are a 
amazing. I love this. I love it. There's some things about to happen. There's some things about to take place. Bishop, I know tonight you are, you are here too also by divine, but I'm also here by divine because certain things he has said and spoke tonight, he was speaking directly to me, and I know he was, and I don't, I don't question God after what I hear God saying. How many of you know that God is up to something huge in your life? Yeah. I didn't say big, neither. I say huge, okay? God is, some, God is up to something huge in your life. Uh, I, I, I've taken on this word that I've gotten big out of my vocabulary and all I think is huge. Yeah. So tonight, some, some things I heard tonight. Mark chapter 11. Let's just let's start there real quickly on tonight. Mark chapter 11. Since we've been in prayer, I just heard this very strong in my spirit tonight as well. Mark chapter 11 has always been a favorite verse of script to me when it comes down to uh, answered prayers, especially answered prayers, how to pray correctly, how to really get your prayers answered. And as Bishop said, I just finished a book, Faith Doing It God's Way. I'm a man of faith. I walk by faith. That's all I have is faith. And faith is only firm believing in something where there is no proof. I want you to make sure you get that. That's what faith is. It's firm believing in something where there is no proof. And faith is a living force and it is drawn from the word of God to produce living proof. This is where we get our faith from. We get our faith from the word. You can't ask for faith. You can't ask for faith because faith only can come by hearing. I want everybody to make sure you get that in your spirit. That's the only way faith comes. Faith can only come by hearing. And you cannot believe God for anything until you hear it. You cannot. You cannot believe God for anything until you hear it. So when I was listening to Bishop tonight, I was hearing, I was hearing the God in the man talking. And the God in the man talk began to prompt my spirit to know that, okay, you act upon what you hear. Because that's all faith is. Faith is just an expression of acting upon what you're hearing. When you hear faith, you have to act upon faith. You have to act upon faith. I often say to people like this here, faith is never based upon how quickly things come to pass. Faith is based upon how long you're willing to wait. That, that's true. Yeah. Thank you over there. I want to make sure you get this. It's very, very important. It's very, very important for you to get this here. Faith is never based upon how quickly things come to pass. Faith is based upon, again, how long you are willing to wait. Okay, a lot of people can't wait. That's why when you look at James chapter 1, when James going to talk about verse number 2, uh, my brother is kind of all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. The correct word should be endurance or perseverance. That word patient, it should be really endurance or perseverance. And when you look at both of those words, endurance and perseverance, both of those words together mean God has given me the ability to last. So when you hear James says, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith is producing patience, but let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and enticing nothing. For in, if any of you lack wisdom, he said, let him ask of God who gives to all men liberally. Then he goes down and he said, but let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like the wave of the sea tossed and driven. James said, let not that man expect he'll receive anything from the Lord. Years ago when I heard that, years ago when I read that there, he said, let not that man expect, or uh, that man, 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 they're both gender now. Don't let that person expect they'll receive anything from the Lord. They're double-minded, they're unstable in all of their ways. We're trying to figure out today why we're not getting our prayers answered. I constantly tell our churches over and over, you know, the devil, he's always waiting for you to say something that is not in line with God's word. And remember this here, God ain't obligated to bless you because you're saved neither. Can I get this to somebody over here? God is not obligated to bless us because we saved. God is a God of order. God is a God of condition. He said, if you be willing and obedient, then you'll eat the good of the land. He's an if and then God. Oh, y'all don't have to say amen. He's an he's a if and then. If you be willing and obedience, then you'll eat the good of the land. That's the word. Bishop said it tonight. Even with your tithe, can you imagine? You bring your tithe. 
You know, I'll always tell people like this because I don't like to just use Malachi chapter three just to try to convince people about giving or tithing because tithing should never be taught out of fear. It should be taught out of faith. Can I get somebody to give what I'm saying? Let me, let me get you this here. Tithing should never be taught out of fear. Don't tell me my car going to break down if I don't tithe. Don't tell me my roof going to fall in if I don't tithe. I sure ain't tithing then. Oh, y'all ain't got to say amen. Second Corinthians, Paul says that when we give, we give cheerfully. Not grudgingly or under compulsion like somebody twisting your arm to do something. You never demand from others what only God can give you. Can I get 20 people to get, I'm trying to get to this message, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to help some of us, all of us, because I don't know about some of you all. This year, 2020, the first of this year, I heard God, after I left Bishop uh, with Propel, uh, the thing then was focus. And that word focus just kept staying in my spirit because, you know, focus is very important to me. Because when I look at the word focus, F, first thing is first. O, other things are second. C, cut out all unimportant things. U, unify with your vision. S, stick with it. Thank you for receiving that. I got something for you over there. I want you to get this in your spirit. See, when I look at the word focus, focus is very important to me now. I got to stay focused in this season. I have to stay focused in this season. Focus is the wound of accomplishment. When you're focused, when you're focused, you know that distractions will come. But only the reason why distractions come, they come to only get you back in line with God. See, some people think distractions are bad. Distractions are not always bad. Some distractions just get you back in line. Some distractions got to come to let you know who you really are. I need 30 people right now. You better know who you are in this season. Tell your neighbor, say, you better know who you are in this season. You better know you got an assignment. You better know you got a purpose. You better know you wasn't dropped here on accident. You better know you was put here on purpose. Hallelujah. You got to know you was put here on purpose. That's why I tell people all the time, I know it's okay when people say haters, haters, haters. Anybody tell me, I don't like to talk about haters. I don't like to talk about know who hate me. Because people don't hate you, they hate the level of your performance. Y'all ain't got to say hey, man. How many people want to be like this man? There's a lot of people want to be like them. People don't hate you. They hate the level of your performance. They can't see how you keep doing what you're doing. Oh, I need somebody to catch what I'm trying to get up in this place. Why are you asking God to move your enemies? He want to leave around here long enough so they can see the glory of God get fulfilled in your life. Stop asking them to move your enemies. That ain't scriptural. He said, I'll prepare a table for you. Lord, help me, Jesus. Why you want them to move them? The only reason why I, can, I feel this annoying because see this ground is laid. Bishop Walker lays a ground. I listen to him too. I get them texts too every morning too. <laughs> I've been getting his texts for years now too. And I'll be trying sometimes they say, you know, you can listen to the bishop so you can mash it. And so some, some I, I, I steal some of his messages sometimes. <laughs> God, he was talking so today. I was like, I'm gonna write this one here down right here. <laughs> I love that man. I really do. I really love that man. Watch this here. I just heard the Holy Spirit told me to tell you now where you're about to go at in this season, 2020, it's a year of focus. That's what God has spoke to me. He said, This will be the year you will be getting things done. I need 30 people to shout like, I'm going to get this thing done. I'm not broke. I, I'm not broke. Come on, shit, can't take bullshit. Let me tell you what I just heard the Lord told me. That's why we have to, here we go again with this saying because I'm trying to get to March chapter 11. Okay, here we go, here we go again. So I often tell people, I, I'm not broke. I'm not talking about what I got in the bank. I'm not talking about what I got in my pocket. I'm talking about, because prosperity don't start in your pocket anyway. 
Start in your mind. John tells Gaius in 3rd John, that's why I tell people, that's a little condition of scripture too though. When John tells Gaius, he said to the beloved elder Gaius, I wish above all that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prosper. He was talking about his suitcase man. He was talking about, I mean, that was a long, that's a, that's a message there, but I can't get into that 3rd John. That's a, that's a real message there. You know, that's a real message there. John dealt with some stuff. Gaius was the pastor of the church, so he had two, he had two individuals in this church, one by the name of Diotrephe and one by the name of Demetrius. And Diotrephe always was trying to just get people, just get people out of the church, kicking them out of the church, just had issues, issues, issues. So John said, look, I, I got to come and deal with his brother here now. He said, I got to deal with him. He said, but you, I want you to prosper. I want you to be in good health, even as your soul prosper. He said, but you got another guy in your church. His name is Demetrius, and he is beloved. He's liked by all the brethren. Go back and read 3rd John. I'm sorry I did y'all like that. But go back and read that. See, you're about to go somewhere in this season of your life that even with some distractions, you cannot let it get you out of your faith. You can't let it get you out of your faith. You got to understand something. This is what I look at. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse number 4. It says, Behold the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Okay? And I had to learn that years ago now. I had to learn that years ago because first thing people do, they take you right over there into Romans 4 and 17, and it is written that the just shall live by faith. And it says, just shall live by faith. But Habakkuk 2 and 4 says, Behold the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. His faith. Romans 12 and 3 said, and God has dealt to each one of us a measure of faith. That means all of us got a quantity of faith. See, what he's, what he's talking, that vision that he's talking tonight, God already done spoke this into my spirit. It's going to be sweatless for him. I wish I had 30 people to give God a praise right now. I say it's going to be sweatless for him. Y'all ain't got to say amen because God is surveying the land right now with people that got same like vision to come and support that man's vision. And if you in great faith with him right now, scream like you one of the ones that God go raise up. Scream. That's why you never say, that's why you never say you broke. You just say you in temporary lack. You got to change your vocabulary now. You never say you're broke, you just say I'm in temporary lack. You say my money is in circulation and it's looking for me. God, I need somebody to come. Because in its correct definition, money is currency. And it's always looking for somebody. So when you say you broke, they say, oh, you ain't the one I'm looking for. I'm looking for someone that's saying I'm pressed down, I'm shaking together, and I'm running over. I'm looking for somebody that say I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed when I come in. I'm blessed when I go out. God, I need somebody to shout with me tonight. My God, grab your neighbor next to you and tell him, say, something about to happen for you this year. No, you got to say it with a real attitude. Say, something is about to happen for you this year. And tell your neighbor, say, you're in the right place at the right time to give God a ridiculous praise because we call those things which be not as though they Watch this here. I'm almost done. Mark chapter 11, verse number 22. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. What's this to happen? What's this to take place? I sense it. What's this to happen? What's this to take place? Mark chapter 11, verse number 22. So Jesus said, have faith in God. He said, have faith in God. As much as I read this, as much as I read this a lot, he says, have faith in God. Have faith in God. He had just cursed the fig tree. The day before, and his disciples saw the fig tree was cursed. And they said to Jesus, look, master, the fig tree that you cursed, it has withered away. So Jesus said to them, he said now in verse 22, he said, so Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. In other words, he would tell them, he said, have the faith of God. God, I want to get somebody to get something in your spirit. So he says, surely I say to you, when you get to verse number 23, he says, surely I say to you, Whoever says to this mountain, mountain be thy removed, be thy cast in the sea, doubt nothing in your heart, believe the things that you say will be done, 
you will have whatever you say. Y'all ain't got to say amen. See, this, this is what I often tell people. My confession controls my life. Watch this here. This is for everybody in this room tonight. What has been, what is, and what will be will be a result of your own confession. Y'all ain't got to say amen up in here. I need 30 people right now to give God a praise like whatever you just spoke is getting ready to come to pass. Come on, somebody. You see, some people think, oh, oh, they, here we go. They, they, some people say, oh, no, they, go, they, they go with all that naming and claiming stuff. Let me tell you something. All of this is Bible. When you get into Hebrews chapter 11, the Bible says God framed the world by the words that he spoke. So when you look at verse number 22, he said, have faith in God. He said, what kind of faith that is? He said, the God kind of faith. You call something to be not as though it was. I need 30 people to act like whatever you've been praying about. It's already done. Give your neighbor high five and say, that thing already done. That thing already done. It's already done. I'm good, I'm good. That thing is already done. It's already done. Want me to go here? Okay. It's already done. What you got to do and what I got to do, what we all got to do, we got to get to a place right now where God is about to take us. See, it ain't good for me to hold this mic because I go to preaching and I know I will. I want to get this thing over to us tonight. Something is about to break so in your life tonight that if God, let me tell you something. He said in the book of Habakkuk chapter one, he said, Habakkuk, look among the nation. He said, watch and be utterly astonished. I'm about to do a work in your days which you would not even believe it even if it was told to you God I need somebody to get what I just said God say even if I told you you would not even believe it somebody give God a praise because God is up to something in your life and ain't nobody man but the devil but give God 30 seconds of a praise and praise in this house We got to get something. We got to get something. Where we're about to go right now. Where we're about to go. Where you're about to go right now. Your eyes haven't seen it. So if you look back again in Habakkuk 1 and 5 again, if he say look among the nation and watch and be utterly astounded, he said, because I'm going to do a work in your days which you would not even believe it even if it was told to you. The Amplified Version says, the work is already being put into effect. Matter of fact, he just told me to tell you, he said, I just laid you on somebody's heart. How many of y'all need God to touch somebody's heart for you tonight? Proverbs said, the heart of the king is in my hand, and I can turn it however I want to turn it. Is there anybody you need God to turn hard tonight? Scream like he just did it. Open up your mouth and scream like he just did it. So he tells me to tell you tonight, even this year, 2020, purpose it in your heart that I'm going to be a consistent tither. Let me get this over to you. Purpose this in your heart that I'm going to be a consistent tither. Some people say, well, the tithe was under the law. Some people say that the tithe was done this year. I don't operate like that. I operate out of the faith of Abraham. Since I am the seed of Abraham. Y'all ain't got to get this one. There was no law, no script, or nothing. Abraham, when he brought his tithe to Melchizedek, nobody made him do that. So if I am Genesis 12, God says to Abraham when he brings him out of earth, he said, now Abe, he said, I want you to understand something. Leave your kindred. Leave the familiar people. See, in this season, 2020, you're going to have to separate yourself from people who don't believe like you. Oh, y'all ain't got to say amen. 
See, I know everybody don't believe like me. That's why I don't get in certain conversation and discussion with everybody. I know everybody don't want to be blessed, but I got to be blessed to do what God is calling me to do. I wish I had 30 people right now. You don't even have the money in your bank account. What God telling you, you about to do. But you better praise God like God just gave you some crazy favor. I wish I had 30 people. I know what I'm talking about. God just gave somebody some favor in here. And you don't even know what he said. But if you are believing me for anything, open up your mouth and scream like it just happened. You got to. Got to understand something where, where, where you're about to go at. I feel this to tell you where you are about to go at right now, where all of us are about to go at right now. And because you're a part of a vision like this, everybody talks about Mount Zion. Can I get that over to you? Everybody talks about Mount Zion. All over this country, everybody talks about your leader. So that means if I'm connected to where I know the rain at, you can get dry all you want to. I'm getting ready to get up under the rain. See, I was listening to him. Is there anybody besides me in great faith or something right now? Who in, here, who in here really in faith for something right now? I'm talking about you're in faith. I don't care if it's in your body. I don't care for your family. If you in faith for something right now, lift your hand right now. Lift, lift your hand. If you are in faith, and especially you with visions, some of you are with visions, this is the greatest opportunity in your life. Luke 16 and 12 says, if you're not faithful to that which belongs to another, how can I bless that which is your own? Really, if you're not pushing someone else's vision, how can I bring somebody to push yours? You only got to say amen. I didn't know he was, I didn't know all of this was going on. I didn't. All I knew a few days ago, God told me, you know what you're about to do. I said, yes, Lord. He said, well, you know, you, the money you got can't pay for what you about to do. I've lived this principle by, if it can't meet the need, it's a seed. I just heard God, and this is what I just heard God, while he was preaching, we're talking, and by that vision, I said, God, I got a vision. I said, help me, help me release my vision like he released his up there. God say you can if you sow where you want to go. Y'all ain't got to say amen. See, y'all talking, but my ministry is just like, hey, you know, we, we, we believe in God for some stuff. So my ministry, last year we got out of debt of $3.5 million in the month of March. Oh, y'all ain't got We got out of debt last year. And so God, the same vision that he has, talking about these young people and everything and what he want to do, that's the same vision I got. I, a man told me one time, he asked me, he said, can he hold some money? And I told him, I said, I didn't have it, which I, I, I didn't have it to give to him. <laughs> I, I'm never going to make that clear. I didn't have it to give to him. Because he don't pay nobody. <laughs> So I told him, I said, I said, well, do you got any money? I said, do you got a little bit of money? He said, yeah, I got some money. I said, well, go on and sow it. I say, I'm, don't, don't even sow it into my ministry. Don't sow it into my ministry. I say, sow it. So he said, ain't nobody never sold into me. I say, you just missed it. You waiting on somebody to sow into you. When Genesis 12, God say, and you shall be a blessing. See, God told Abraham, he said, Abe, he said, I'm going to bless them that bless you. When I heard him talking about his vision, 
I heard the Lord say, you know what you believe in for? I said, yes, Lord. He said, you know he talking about the church coming out of debt too, right? I said, yes. You see how grateful and he appreciative of what his people have done for him, for this ministry, right? I said, yes, Lord. He said, well, the night is a good night for you to sow in that. <laughs> Wait a minute. See, I said, and I did. I was sitting over there. I said, well, God, if that's what you're telling me. He said, yeah, you need to sow $10,000 in that ministry. That a night. Well, I'm, I need to get down here because God just told me to tell you somebody about to finance your vision tonight. Open up your mouth if you, y'all ain't got to say amen. I, I heard God told me, he didn't have to tell me twice. See, the devil ain't gonna never tell you to give. And God ain't obligated to repeat himself twice neither. Did y'all hear what I just say? God ain't obligated to repeat himself twice. He, I sat there, I said, God, he said, tonight you must sow that into this ministry because you know what you believe in for. And I don't know who I'm talking to tonight, but God told me to tell you to touch the person next to you and tell them, say, God is about to bless your socks off. <laughs> Y'all ain't got to say it. Come on, open up your mouth. If there's somebody, move if you will. Don't look at nobody that don't feel like you feel. If you got a vision right now, shout like God just sent somebody. Y'all ain't shouting. Come here, come here. I don't know what got in your spirit to bring that up. But God told me to tell you with seed, he said, when I talk to you, he said, don't question me by seed. He said, because I'm going to keep blessing you every time you hear. Every time you hear, when you hear God tell you, don't you do that. Come back here. Bring yourself back here. Get yourself back over here. And I pray. And I'll bless those who bless you. You better stream it from... See, the devil don't want somebody to get this. But God just told me to tell you, I'm getting ready to bless your socks off in 2000. Run if I'm talking to you. Come here, Doc. Come here, bro. Come here, bro. Come here. I don't know what you in faith for. I don't know what you in faith for. But I'm touching and agreeing with you. Because God told me to tell you, it don't matter what you broke out of just then to brought that seed up here. But God said, I just laid you on somebody's heart. And he said, give me praise like I just did it. feel something pushing you. That's your wife. The Lord told me to tell both of you to give him a praise right now because he, he's turning some stuff around for you right now. He told me you've been faithful over a few things. He said, I'm about to bless you with... I need 30... He said, if you praise me right now, I'm... Look at 30 people and tell them real quickly, say, whatever God about to do, you better praise him right now. Like God just did it. Praise it for your debts being canceled. Praise it for your bills being paid. Praise it that you'll never be broke another day in your life.
trying to close on something, First Lady. But God telling me to tell you, it's raining in this house. God told me to tell you, 2020, whatever seed the man of God asks for, if you don't even have it, purpose in your heart, you gon' get it. If that's you, open up your mouth and give God 30 seconds of praise. I do. I believe in your vision. I believe. I believe in this vision. I'm not just doing that for no show. Anybody know me or tell you. When God tell me to sow, Isaac sold in Genesis 26. Bible says sold in a famine. Go back and read it. Genesis 26, it says he sold in a famine. And when you read verse number 12, it says, Isaac began to prosper till he became very prosperous. He prospered so until the Philistines ended him. They tried to cut off all of his wealth, all of his connections, all of his resources. They were trying to cut him off. But God said when he sowed in that famine, the Bible said he reaped it in the same year. Thank you, I need 30 people, 2020, you gonna reap this in the same year. You, you better put some pressure on that word. You better put some pressure on that word. I didn't sow that seed there having doubt. I believe that God gonna give me, wait a minute. Amos 9 and 13 says, when you read it from the Message Bible, Amos 9 and 13 says, yes indeed, it won't be long now. God's decree things gonna happen so fast till your head gonna swim one thing fast on the heels of the other you won't be able to keep up with what God about to do I need 30 people to give God a praise like you know this is my year this is my year Lift those hands, lift those hands. My God, you all up in there. You all up in there. You all up in there. Lift those hands. See, the enemy don't want somebody to get a particular word, but you got it tonight. You got it these 21 days. Everything that your bishop been pouring out, everything, everything, everything is going to be happening this year. Everything going to be happening this year. Some of you all right now, I'm telling you, this is the year. This is the year. And somebody say, well, you know, we say it every year. Well, you're going to remember your confession controls your life. When we started our ministry in, in 1996, we had nothing. We had nothing. 
were handing out rent. And Lord telling me to start my ministry. I said, God, why are you going to do me like this? Why are you going to put me out here like this? He told me, that's when he gave me that scripture, Habakkuk 1 and 5. He gave me that scripture. He said, I'm going to do a work in you that you won't even believe it if I told you. I'm telling you, I'm just being honest with you. My wife was here tonight, she'll tell you. I said, God, I said, we can't do it. We, 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 we can't do it. He said, look, if you waiting to go when you get this, he said, I can't use you. I told him, if you give me this and if you give me that, then I'll start the ministry. He said, if you waiting to go then, he said, I can't use you. He said, I need you to go in your mess so I can get some glory out of it. He said, I need you to go in your, I need you to go in your mess until I get glory out of it. I remember one time God told me that if the whole bank account, they thought I was crazy. Some of the members left me. They walked off from me. God said, empty the whole bank account. I said, okay, God, if that's what you told me, I'm going to do it. We started the ministry in 1996. We built, we paid off to the banks. I was like, Mark, what in the world are you doing? I said, all I live is, I live three principles, tithe, offerings, and seed. Dr. Fred Price told me some years ago, he said, Mark, he said, give God a chance to fail. I never forget that. I will never forget it. As I stand here, I never forget it. We were sitting talking. He knew I was in faith. I used to catch a, a coach ticket to go all the way to California and walk the faith dome and just walk it and see. I heard God told me, He said, I'm the same God in Brunswick as I am in California. I heard Acts 10 and 34 came in my spirit, so he said, I show no partiality. He said, I have no respect of person. He said, I respect principles. Principles. I respect principles. Giving is a principle. Sowing is a principle. Genesis 8 and 22, he says, while the earth remained, there will always be seed, time, and harvest. Seed plus time equals harvest. You have to give the seed God. Thank y'all for receiving it. You receive it? You have to give the seed time. Now what I just sold it to him, trust me, I got other seeds ahead of those, that seed there now. I got other seeds ahead of that. So now I can live out of Amos 9 and 13. The harvest will overtake the reaper. Let me, let me show you something. What that means as fast as you sow it, you're going to be picking up harvest just like that. Y'all ain't got to say amen. I'm trying to help somebody out of here. I did it. I did it. I did it one night. Bless you, daughter. I did it one day. Dr. Bill Winston, very close friend of mine, he was at my church, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me, and um, he was going in the back, my son, and was taking him on so he can get out of there. And so I told him, I said, hold, hold up, Dr. Wilson. I said, hold, hold Bill up. He, so when I went to the back, he said, hey, what's wrong, Pastor? I said, I just want to obey God. He said, he said, well, obey God. What's wrong? I said, the Lord told me why you was teaching the soul a $5,000 seed in you. So he said, well, obey God then. I did it. They had to get him out of there. They had to get him out of there fast. I did it. And by the time I came back out of my office to go back into the church to shake the hands of some of the saints that was around, one guy walked up to me. He said, he said, Pastor Baker, Pastor Baker. I said, yeah, Pastor Bussy. He says, I need to obey God. I need to obey God. I say, well, obey God then. He said, the Lord told me to sow $5,000 in you. I said, wait a minute. I said, huh? He said, the Lord told me to sow $5,000 in you. That wasn't even 10 seconds. Let me tell you something. Luke 6 and 38 says, give and it shall be. 
Watch this here. Once you get this principle down really, really in you, soon as you give, God lays you on somebody else's heart. I want you to get this. I want you to get this seriously. I want you to get this seriously. Some of you all in here tonight, before this year is out, before this month is out, before this quarter is over with, the Lord told me to tell you, in this ministry, I, I'm in great faith with whoever you are because I know it's going to happen. He said he's going to get a seed to you. He said, but the seed ain't for you. Just please hear me. Please. Please hear me. I told you, I don't tell you nothing. I love that man up there. I love his wife. I'm not here for nothing. I'm here out of relationship. God told me a few last year. He said, I'm getting ready to surround you with incredible minds. I need that man's mind. That man doing something on a level that I'm not on. But I do believe my connectedness to him. Same grace. Same grace. Same grace. I don't know what you're feeling. God gonna do it, man. I see your heart. God gonna do it. God gonna do it. God gonna do it. God gonna do it. The closer I get to you, I hear God say, I'm gonna do it, man. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Some of y'all young men's over there, God told me to tell you, he gonna do it for you. Some of y'all ladies in here, some of you singers, God said, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Get ready, man. God gonna do it. Some of you couples in here, some of you married couples in here, I decree over you right now, I'm telling you, from the first through the fifth, all your bills are paid. From the first through the fifth, all your bills are paid. I got to do something, because God done spoke this to me too. Because I pray, I pray about souls to be saved before I come in a meeting. I pray about souls to be saved. I also pray about the ones who God wants to challenge the soul. Now there's those that are not saving you tonight. You need to give your life to the Lord. I want to flow in the area here because I know the Lord is speaking to me. You need to give your life to the Lord tonight. If you're in here and you're not saved, you're going to have to give your life to the Lord tonight. Those that are really, I'm telling you, you don't even have to be in great faith for something. God telling me to tell you if you will obey you're going to see some things break for you this year. Man. You're going to see some things break for you. I often tell people, a lady was in my ministry. We was believing God for the land that we have. And this lady, she gave her whole social security check to the church. And I, I, told, I told her I couldn't take it. I told her I couldn't take it. I said, there's no way, Miss Joyce, I can take it. It was her whole her social security check. It was $1,200. I said, Miss Joyce, I can't take that check. I said, I can't take it. You got seven children. I cannot take your check. Single parent, seven children. She told me, Bishop, she said, if you don't believe what you're preaching, why are you preaching it? She told me, she said, you preached to us Genesis 26. You told us Isaac sold in a family. You told us that man reaped in the same year, a hundred times much more than he sold. She said, if you don't believe what you're preaching, why are you preaching it? She said, you say we believe it for that land? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, you said you believe me for those that can sow a thousand dollars, you said to sow it? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, I'm going to sow my social security check, which was $1,200. I had to receive that $1,200 in three weeks. Michael Jordan came to our little city and recruited her son and gave him $12 million. I need 30 people to get up in here tonight. God told me to tell you, this is going to be your reaping year. 30 people, open up your mouth. This is going to be your reaping year. Come on, I see it on you, man. I know what I see on you. It's going to be your reaping year. 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 I asked God about this. I really did. The only way, I asked God about this shit. Now, you have, this is faith walk. And it don't have to be faith walk for a lot of you all, because you're there. But don't hesitate. If it's you, if you, if, if, if it's you, it's not, in fact, not that you need something. He said, if it's you, if you, if you, you know you can do it. He said, do it. Because your seed is getting ready to cause a harvest. And it don't have to be for you, but it can be something that you point yourself to, to your future. I don't know who you are. But I don't want you to hesitate if you if you if it's you. The Lord say $220. Quickly come to the altar. Quickly. $220. Quickly. Don't hesitate. 
Quickly come to the altar. Quickly come to the altar. If it's you, come to the altar. Don't hesitate. I hear the Lord saying, if it's you, come to the altar real quickly. 220. 220. Come to the altar. Come to the altar. Don't hesitate. Don't hesitate. Don't worry about who's looking at you. Don't worry about what nobody think about you. Don't worry about what nobody feel about you. If that's you, come quickly. My God. Man. Man. Telling you, I see something now. Let me stick with you. I see something. I see something. I see something. I'm telling you. That's right. Lift your hand. Lift your hand. Lift your hand. I see something. I see something. 220. Those that come, come quickly. Those that can, come quickly. Those that can, come quickly. 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 I wouldn't even ask for that seed if I didn't feel God told me to tell you. That's right, those from the choir. The Lord told me. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even do it. I prayed about it. I prayed about it a week ago. I don't travel different places, but I prayed about it a week ago. When I left my the hotel room tonight, I asked God, I said, really? He said, yeah. He said, tonight. Tonight. Come. Those that are coming, come. 220. 220. I know it's on a Tuesday. God told me to tell you to come. You in faith, baby? You are. Y'all come on in, just be some closer. You in faith, ain't you? I see you. To understand me right now, God knows I'll give every one of y'all back that $220 right now. Right now I do. Right now I do. Right now I do. Right now I do. But I'm telling you, God's fits to release something under this anointing. God's fits to release something under this anointing. God's fit to release something. Thank you for receiving it. Thank you for receiving it. Thank you for receiving it. Now, open up. That's it, daughter. That's it. Just open up. That's it. That's it. That's it. Some of you all that's thinking, God told me to tell you, move now. Move now. Move now. Thank you. Look, some of you all that are thinking, God say move. God say move. Don't worry about who's looking at you. Don't worry about what nobody thinks. God told me to tell you to move. Move. Move from wherever you at. Move. Move from wherever you at. 220. God say move. 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 You can tell it's the Spirit of God because it ain't no force. You can tell it's the Spirit of God. It ain't no force. It ain't no force. It ain't no force. I sense it. It ain't no force. It ain't no force. It ain't no force. It ain't no force. I feel God on that. It ain't no force. You're still coming. You in that balcony, you thinking about it. Come on down here. That's you. That's you. That's you. That's you. There's four of you in the choir. You thinking, and I feel the Lord says, four of you in that choir thinking. And if that's you and you know that's you, God told me to tell you, come on now, quickly. As quick as you do it. Now that's you're going to perform his will now. There y'all go. I know you was thinking. I know you was thinking. I feel you. I feel you. I really do. I feel you. 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 I, oh. You, you, you got a passion for that, don't you? You really got a passion for that, don't you? You really do, don't you? I see you. I see you. I'm in faith with you too, man. When I tell you I'm in faith with you, I'm in faith with you right now. 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 I'm trying to let it go. God is speaking to you. God is speaking to you. You're coming from the back? Come. You're coming, come. 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 There you go. There you go. There you go. Oh, my God. When I see them tears like that, you don't know what I'm dealing with right now, daughter. You don't know what I'm dealing with right now. So I have a mindset like this here. I got to go back to that hotel. I got to lay down. I got to get back on the plane in the morning. I don't play by this here. I don't play by this here. I don't play. I got children. That's my baby boy right there. I got children. I got grandchildren. I don't need to be doing nothing that God ain't told me to do. Because I don't play with people. 
I don't play with people's money. I don't play with seed. I don't play with it. 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 You're still coming. I feel you. You're still coming. You're still coming. There you go. Come on. You're still coming. You're coming down that wall. I see you. Come on. You're still coming. Don't let nothing stop you. Don't even let the crowd stop you here. Don't even let the crowd stop you. Come on. I see you. I see you coming. 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 There are some watching, and I know you are. There's some watching now. I already know you are. There's some watching. There's some watching. I want you to obey too. I want you to obey now. I want you to obey. 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 I can't let it up. I feel God. That's why you're still coming. 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 I feel you. You're still coming. Lift those hands all over the building. Just lift those hands all over the building. Some of you all, you got a heart to do it. You got a heart to do it. God gonna make it possible for you. You might have couldn't do it in this service here. But I want you for the weekend to get here. There you go. You're still coming. There you go. You're still coming. I feel you. You're still coming. 220. I, I felt God on this. I really did. I felt God on this here. I wouldn't do it if I did not feel God on it. Somebody said, Pastor Baker, you don't know, this is all I got. I never will forget one night I was in a service, never will forget it, in Atlanta, Georgia. Bishop Wiley Jackson, Bishop Andrew Turner, I think I said let the propel. Bishop Andrew Turner asked for my last $200 seed. And I was praying, that was years ago. I said, Lord, I've been in the meeting all week and I done gave and gave. And Bishop Andrew Turner asked for a $200 seed. That was the last seed I had. And I heard the Lord say, get up there and put it on that altar. I went up there and put it on the altar. Maybe it was something simple to some people. But on that Monday morning, I still had, a, I guess, maybe a year, year and a half to pay on a car. And I, the title was in the mailbox. And that Monday morning, when I, when I saw it, I went to the bank and I said, Miss Faith. She said, hey, Mark. I said, the title to my car. I say, you know, you was the one that, you know, gave me the loan for that particular car. She said, yeah. She said, let me look at the computer. And she said, Mark, the car paid off. I said, I said, Miss Faye, I said that. I said, Miss Faye, there's no way possible. I said, you know, I still own on this car. She checked it again. She said, Mark, the car is paid off. And I heard all the girls say, can you go on and receive the blessing? Can you go on and receive the blessing? Let me tell you something. What, I'm, what the Lord has me to do tonight and the way your, reason why your heart been prompt to give, God would never let no one respond to an offering like this if the one who's asking for it ain't a giver. I give, I sow. I sow, this is my life. This is my life. I sow. I sow. I sow. It just got down in me one day. First lady just got down in me. If I can tell you, I can give you all my experiences right now, but I want your faith. There you go, you're still coming. I want your faith. I want your faith to be there. Because God is not a respecter of person. He not. He not. He not. It's been prophesied we can rent to build a, a new building to a youth building, you know, a banquet hall. We're building a gymnasium. We're building a lecture hall. We're building game rooms right now. Matter of fact, before I get back, they're probably going to be already start cutting down by, I guess, three or four acres of the land. They're already ready. They're ready to cut. They're waiting on me to get on back. And it's been prophesied. One of my ministers last night, she said, the Lord told her, she said, Pastor, you know what? It's a possibility that when we go in that building, we're going to be cutting the ribbon and we're going to be paying the debt off at the same time. And I, and I said, and I did. I said, Lord, I'm thanking you. And when I heard Bishop Vision tonight, I knew that was the right time. 
I knew that was the right time. And God spoke that to me. Because what I got in the bank can't pay for this new building that I'm fixing to build. So it ain't nothing but seed. Ain't nothing but seed. Your job ain't nothing but a resource. God is your source. Come on, you got to live out your seed. Come on, somebody. You got to live out your seed. You got to live out your seed. That's why you don't eat your seed. He gives seed to the soil, bread to the eater. He multiplies the seed. You don't eat seed. No. When you eat your seed, your life is bitter. If you ever bite in a seed, especially an apple seed, it's literally like poison. Because you're never supposed to eat your seed. Thank you, thank you. Your seed is supposed to be planted. Your seed is to be planted so it can bring you the harvest that you need. One young lady told me, she said, you know, she was saw someone when the bus bust out and the kids was in there, it was real cold, and she's a believer. And she said, Lord, I wish I could get these people one to fix for them babies. And she said, God told her, say, you could if you had some seed in the ground. Amen. Said, if you had them plant last year, you'd be able to go to your bank and just take them people right on over there. Lift those seed, lift it. Everyone else in the audience, I need you to get, I need you to get the largest seed you can. I want you just, and I want you to hold your hand up when you get it. Some that can sow 120, some that can sow 100, Whatever it is, and, and, and if you're on that level, I want you to do it now. I don't want to just, just call, call you up and call you up. No, I want you to sow it. If you can sow, sow 120, sow 120. If you can sow 100, sow 100. If you can sow 20, I want on this, on this message, on this word, I want you to go ahead and get that seed in your hand. Lift that seed up all over, if you, even if you're in the audience, if you're in the balcony. Come on, just lift that seed up. Lift that seed up. Tie your faith in with this seed here. Tie your faith in with this seed. Tie your faith in with this seed. Yeah, my seed going in. My ministry seed. My seed personally going in this offer tonight. My seed personally has to go in this offer. Hallelujah. And the seed that leave your hand will not leave your life. And when you get that seed, and I know it might be tight, but when you get that seed, I want everybody, all in the audience too, when you get that seed, I want you to lay it on the altar, and I want you to decrease something. I want you to speak that this is the year. This is the year. I'm going to be a consistent tither. Come on, somebody. I'm going to be a consistent offering giver. I'm going to support my man of God. You talking about a break coming in your life? Galatians 6 and 6. Galatians 6 and 6. Let them who is taught the word share in all things with the one who teaches you. Every time you get revelation, every time you get confirmation from your leader, you don't even want to wait for his birthday. You don't even want to wait for no anniversary. You want to be a blessing to the man and the woman of God. You want to really get this thing on you? Ezekiel 44 and 30 say, if you bring a priest a good gift, it say he will cause a blessing to rest on your house. Let me tell you something. Bishop going to pray for my ministry. He'll be up all night. Lord, make that thing happen. Lord, make that vision happen for me. I want to be able to sow a seed when I know that if it can just touch his heart, that he can get a prayer through, a breakthrough. I already know I'm going to be calling. Guess what, man? That seed broke something. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God told me, tell me, he, he said, that thing can happen tonight, too. Lift that seed. As you got that seed, lift it. Lift that seed. Father, we thank you for the seed that is about to leave our hand, but it won't leave our life. And we all are in together. God told me to tell everybody, if you're still in here, he said, whatever that seed is, I want you to get it and lay it on the altar and watch what God is about to do. Watch what God is about to do. We thank you as this seed leave our hand, it will go into our future. We thank you for 2020. We thank you for a year of more than enough. We thank you for this year. This seed got our children on it. It's got our businesses on it. 
It got our body, our health, everything we are in great faith for. It got it on it, God. We thank you tonight. We praise you tonight. We glorify you tonight. We lift you up tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. God, thank you for the man of God. Point your hand at him. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I see his faith, God. Oh, I see his faith. Oh, I see his vision, God. Thank you for him praying these 21 days. Thank you for him going the extra mile. Thank him for him going over and above. Restore back into him. It's his desire to see the people go to the next level. It's his desire to see this ministry go to the next level. He's not moved by his titles. And he wears many titles, God. But God, I thank you right now that you would do something so in this man of God's life that his eyes haven't seen, his ears haven't heard. God, it will be sweatless for him. This thing is going to be effortless for him. This thing is going to be struggle-free for him, God. And I thank you that this ministry will have a spirit of effortless giving. And I thank you for his help me, God. I thank you for the one that is called alongside of him. I thank you, God, for her interceding morning, noon, and night. I thank you, God, she believed just as much in the vision as he believed in it. I thank you that she believed in sowing into this ministry just as much as he believed in it. I thank you for her tonight, God. I praise you for her tonight, God. I give you glory tonight. I give you honor tonight. In the name of Jesus, lay that seat at the altar. As you go back to your seat, lay that seat. And everyone else from the audience, God told me to tell you, every one of you all, every one of you, bring the seat. Lay it at the altar. The Lord said, if, if, if you just obey it, if it ain't nothing but a dime, he said, tell them, just get something. He said, tell them to get something. Get it in their hand. Come on, bring it. Get it in their hand. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Where's my son at? Hallelujah. Where those books at? Got them? Hallelujah. Richard, bring them to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, 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 come on. Hallelujah. How many receive faith teaching? How many receive it? How many of you receive the message of faith tonight? Lift your hand if you receive the message of faith tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm waiting on me to come on real quickly. Real quick. Make sure you get. It. I'm gonna make sure you get. It. Ask them. 
That's a power. When I tell you that's some powerful information, though, I kid you not. That's some powerful information there. I want them to go get the rest of them. I want them. To, I don't know how far they got to go. That's you, my brother. You coming with some of them? That's them. Don't give away Bishop no now. <laughs> Wait a minute, that's those books? No, bring them up here. These have been standing up here first. They been standing up here first. Come on. Come on. Thank you. Thank you. I love my Zion. You got me some more? my baby boy right there, y'all. I love y'all. My office gonna get me. They gonna, be, they gonna get me. I hope, I hope they ain't looking. <laughs> Where you at? Let me get this brother in. Y'all promise me y'all gonna read it, right? Come on, y'all promise me y'all gotta read it now. I'm in... I'll be going back to uh, Abuja, Africa in a couple more weeks. And when I'm in Africa, y'all remind me of something. That's all? I got to get one or somebody there to get this right here. I love y'all. Is that all? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to make sure. I'm going to send some more back there, okay? I love y'all. Put your hand together for your bishop. First lady, I love you, sis. I love you so much. Thank you, my brother. Put your hand together for my brother, my friend, Bishop Joseph Walker. Come on, Zaya. Put your hand together for him. Richard. Where you at, Richard? Richard, where you? Oh, I want to make sure that check got you gave it. Okay, all right. I want to make sure I get my seat in the ground. I thank you, Bishop. I thank you for the opportunity. Put your hand together for the bishop. I love you, man. Come on, let's thank God for the man of God. Oh my goodness. It's not often I'm speechless after hearing a word and then hearing and seeing the true manifestation of it. Mount Zion, I absolutely love you. And I really hope you understand the genuineness and the sincerity of what you just experienced today. It's about God shifting us to a whole nother level of faith. I'm so grateful for you tonight. And I just can't wait to see what God going to do. With all that seed in the ground, y'all better get ready. Something crazy is about to hit your house, son. Huh? Come on, let's stand together. Um, God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for showing us who we are. What we have a right to. Thank you. Every need in this house. Every need in our house. We believe by faith shall be met and we thank you that it's already done in the name of Jesus Christ we declare and decree it is so in Jesus name amen come on hug somebody tell them it was good to be here love y'all so much
We'll see you guys on Saturday or Sunday. No Bible study tomorrow. Thank you for streaming in. Thank all of you. God is awesome.